This is the third part of our discussion on Kashi Gorsa theorem. So far, we have seen this beautiful result, what, what is Cauchy's theorem, and then uh, now we are going to see its generalization. As we know that Cauchy introduced this Cauchy's theorem in 1825, and then Gorsa generalized it in Cauchy Gorsa theorem, and it was introduced in 1883. Now, let's recall what is Cauchy's theorem. So, Cauchy's theorem says that if f is any analytic function in a simply connected domain and c is a simple closed contour in this simply connected domain d, then this contour integral is always going to be zero. Now, uh, Gorsa said that we don't need this condition that f prime is continuous in d. And uh, he proved this theorem without using this condition and hence generalized it to this Cauchy Gorsa theorem. Now, the statement is the same apart from the fact that we dropped the condition that f prime is continuous in this simply connected domain d. And the rest of the theorem is the same. And uh, once again, this theorem asserts that this contour integral of uh, this function, analytic function f of z, along this simple closed contour in, uh, is equal to 0. And uh, of course, we don't need to impose this condition now. Okay? So, um, uh, we are uh, not going to discuss the proof of uh, this theorem. And if you are interested, uh, you can uh, see the books of uh, Churchill or Matthews uh, to see its proof. Now, let's see how to apply uh, this uh, cauchy gorsa theorem uh, to evaluate some contour integral. Now, consider uh, this uh, function 1 over z. If we want to calculate this contour integral along this contour c, which is uh, given in this form. So, this is the parametric representation. Now, let us see uh, what is uh, uh, this contour, what is the geometry of this contour. So, over here it is 2 plus cosine t. So, in other words, there is a translation of 2 along this uh, x axis. So, translation of 2 in the values of cosine t and there is a translation of 3 in the values of sine t. So, and we know that uh, if we take cosine t plus iota sine t, then it is a circle. Uh, if t varies between 2 pi and 0, then it is a circle. And now, since we translated along x axis and y axis, so 2 units in the direction of x axis and 3 units in the direction of y axis, and it is a circle of unit radius. So, it is something like that. Okay. So, uh, in fact, c is a circle of radius 1 and center 2, 3 because uh, that is the translation. Uh, 2 along x axis and 3 along y axis. And uh, uh, the equation of this circle is x minus 2 square plus y minus 3 square equal to 1. Okay. Now, the point is this function 1 over z is analytic at every point in the complex plane apart from this point z is equal to 0, but this point is outside this circle c. Now, hence this implies that uh, this contour integral is 0. Now, let us see. Uh, how it satisfies all the conditions of Cauchy Gorsa theorem. Now, Cauchy Gorsa theorem uh, states that function should be analytic in a simply connected domain D. Now, we can take, for example, a bigger circle which contains this circle, and we can find such circle and uh, such that origin is not contained in this uh, bigger circle, and we can call this d to be our domain and this d is simply connected okay because uh, whenever you take a loop and uh, uh, th this uh, loop uh, the interior of this loop is always contained in this d okay so this d is simply connected and the function is uh, analytic at each and every point in this domain d and uh, hence uh, by cauchy gorsa theorem this contour integral is zero now let's see some of the consequences of cauchy gorsa theorem so some of the benefits that we get this uh, with this cauchy gorsa theorem now one of the main benefit uh, that we get from cauchy gorsa theorem is independent of path if we have a simply connected domain and if we are trying to calculate the contour integral of an analytic function which is analytic in that domain d then we get this huge benefit of independence of path so in other words if we want to evaluate a contour integral 
and it satisfies the condition of Cauchy Gursa theorem, then we can take any contour from point let's say z0 to z1, then the value of the contour integral is not going to be changed. So it is independent of path. Now let's see precisely what does this uh, notion independence of path mean and then we will try to prove that how Cauchy Gursa theorem implies this independence of path. So uh, precisely speaking if we have a point z0 in a simply connected domain D and another point z1 in the same domain and this is the contour C and if we evaluate this contour integral then the answer let's call it C1 then the answer is going to be the same if we take any other contour let's say C2. So this is going to be equal to the contour integral along these two contours. Okay, so a contour integral is said to be independent of path, independent of path if its value is the same for all contours C in D with initial point Z0 and terminal point Z1. So that is uh, what it means by independence of path. Now let's have a look how cauchy gursa theorem implies the independence of path. It's a very basically a simple proof but uh, one of the, the main consequences of uh, cauchy gursa theorem. Okay? So let's say we have this uh, simply connected domain D and uh, we have this uh, contour uh, C from let's call it C1 from point Z0 to Z1. Now what do we want to prove? We want to prove that if, if I take any other contour from Z0 to Z2 let's call this other contour to be C2 then uh, we need to show that okay so let's see what do we need to show so we need to show that this contour integral along this contour C1 is equal to the contour integral along this contour C2 and of course it satisfies now in this contour C1 the direction in which we are moving is from Z0 to Z1 and similarly and now consider this contour C which is basically C2 minus C1. Now this contour uh, is uh, C2 so we travel along this C2 and then we travel along minus C2 in other words we come back. So in other words we have this contour which is uh, anti-clockwise and uh, this contour integral satisfies all the conditions of cauchy gursa theorem so in other words when uh, we integrate this f of z along c and c is basically a simple closed uh, contour in this simply connected domain d and f of z is analytic inside this domain d then this must be equal to zero and what does this imply so this implies that uh, c2 minus c1 f of z dz is equal to 0 and uh, uh, according to uh, the properties of the contour integral that we proved we have shown that this minus f of z along c1 dz is equal to 0 and this clearly implies what we needed to show so uh, this uh, cauchy gursa theorem has this consequence uh, that uh, if we want to uh, evaluate a contour integral then uh, we can choose any path from z0 to z1 and the answer is going to be the same one of the very powerful consequences now our next discussion is based uh, on the fact that can we generalize this cauchy gursa theorem and uh, the fact is yes we can generalize and now we are going to drop another condition which is uh, the condition that the contour is simple so simple means uh, it should not intersect itself but now we allow that and uh, this generalization says that the rest of the conditions are the same f is analytic in a simply connected domain d and c is just a closed contour then this contour integral is going to be equal to zero okay now uh, let's see uh, what does this statement mean okay so let's say we have some contour which is 
closed but not simple so as you can see that uh, the contour is moving like this and we are moving like this so this is the contour c which is closed but not simple so uh, roughly speaking what does uh, uh, this statement mean so this statement means that this contour integral is zero uh, but we can uh, kind of break this uh, uh, contour uh, integral or this contour into different parts and uh, in this part in this part you can see that it is a very tiny uh, simple uh, closed contour and once again this portion is once again a very tiny simple closed contour so along these uh, loops uh, the contour integral is going to be equal to zero and what are we left with is again a simple closed contour so we can say that if it is not simple then we can uh, write it down as a sum of many simple closed contours and uh, hence we have the same result but uh, the point is uh, there are much more complicated situations than the one depicted here so for example there could be infinitely many points of intersection uh, of uh, c with itself okay? so self intersections so um, to uh, to see uh, why it also works in that uh, uh, case we have to see the proof of this thing but unfortunately uh, we are not going into the proof of uh, this theorem so once again for the proof i will suggest you to have a look at some of the uh, good books of uh, complex analysis for example churchill or matthews now moving on to our uh, next uh, application of this uh, generalization of cauchy gursa theorem okay now uh, we have a contour integral that we want to evaluate and the only information about this contour is that it is closed and it is inside this unit square okay so what is this uh, unit square so this is x axis this is y axis and uh, this is this unit square so this is one and this is one so whatever the contour is it is closed and it is inside this unit square okay and uh, nothing else is given about this contour and we want to evaluate this contour integral now the integrand is analytic at every point except at the points where the denominator is zero and uh, the denominator is zero let's see uh, what are the values when the denominator is zero so z square plus four so we can say that this is equal to uh, z uh, minus two iota z plus two iota so this is the factorization and this implies that z is equal to plus minus two iota so these are the points where the denominator is zero and these are the points these are the only points where this integrand is uh, not analytic okay so as long as uh, we have uh, these points in the domain then uh, we cannot apply the cauchy gursa theorem but fortunately uh, the domain in which we are working is the unit square and these points plus minus 2 iota lies outside this domain okay so this is uh, 2 iota and this is minus 2 iota okay so apart from these points the function is analytic so we can say that the function is analytic inside this uh, uh, unit square a okay so first condition is satisfied and the second condition is also satisfied because uh, we have imposed the condition on the contour that it must be closed so all of the conditions of this generalization of cauchy gursa theorem are satisfied remember we are not imposing the condition that c is simple and hence we have that uh, this contour integral is zero so if you have a unit square okay, then you can take any contour okay so just take any contour okay as long as it is simple and it is contained in this uh, uh, square then this integral contour integral is going to be equal to zero now this is the end of our discussion on this uh, part 3 of uh, Cauchy-Gursa theorem and its generalization.